let's go over how to install and use alpha trees. We'll cover how to download and extract the correct files, how to install the add-on for Blender, how to install the library of trees, how to use alpha trees to create a simple forest with just a few clicks, and how to use the alpha trees library with Scatter 5. So let's get started. First, download the add-on file and the library file. The add-on is the zip file marked alpha trees 2 install and the library is the zip file marked alpha trees 2 extract. Something to note is that there are also older versions of the add-on in the downloads that are meant for older versions of Blender and don't have all the features included in the new version. Currently, the latest version should be marked 2.0 or above. Since the library needs to be extracted from the zip file in order to be used, let's do that now. Now let's install the add-on. This works like any other add-on in Blender, so I'm sure you know the drill by now. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, and select the add-on zip file. Then, we need to tell the add-on where the library we just extracted is, by clicking the folder icon and selecting it. Finally, you can optionally install some Python dependencies that are used to help speed up the add-on. With them enabled, icons will load instantly, instead of taking up to 40 seconds to load a full library. However, this isn't necessary for the add-on to function, and without, it will just be a bit slower. Now that the add-on has been installed, you can find it in the sidebar of the 3D viewport. Let's try adding a single alpha tree to the scene. First, in the import panel, set the mode from particle to object. This shows a selector which you can use to find the specific tree that you want to import. If you already know the tree you want, you can type its name in the search box to find it more easily. Now just click Import and the tree will be added to your scene at the 3D cursor. If you want to edit the look of the tree, you can open the Material section and change almost every aspect of its looks, such as its colour, number of leaves, amount of snow, and even more. Finally, you can make the tree point towards any camera in the scene by selecting it from the drop down in the tracking panel, or you can make it automatically point towards the scene camera by clicking the checkbox next to it. Now, let's add another tree to the scene, just like before. When it's imported, it will still have the default settings. So let's copy the camera tracking settings from the first tree by selecting it and clicking the copy button in the tracking section. Then click OK and all of the settings will be copied to the new tree. You can do this with any section with any number of trees at a time. Now let's see how to create a whole forest with alpha trees. To start, create a terrain with the ant landscapes add-on. Then switch back to the particle mode in the import panel and add a biome slot by clicking the plus button next to the biome list. Then adjust the density to your liking and add a new biome by clicking new settings. Biomes are groups of trees and their settings that can be scattered across multiple objects, much like materials or node groups. Some useful things to know about biomes are that when you first add one, it will use placeholder object instead of a tree card until you manually select one, and that it's always a good idea to make sure that the scale of the terrain you're scattering the trees on is applied, so that the settings like density and size will still work correctly. To add a tree to this biome, go to the Trees panel and choose one by clicking on the selector and picking the one you want. This will scatter that tree across the terrain, which already creates a fairly convincing forest. And because each tree has very little geometry, we can still preview everything in the real-time viewport. But only having one tree in our forest is a bit boring, so let's add some more by clicking the plus button next to the tree list to add a new tree slot and selecting a new tree to scatter. Because it is in the same biome as the first tree, it will have the same scattering settings, but you can also change settings such as scale, width and material settings individually. 
Now let's add a couple more trees of the same species and then create a new biome so that we can have better control over the scattering for different types of trees. I find that having one biome per tree species usually allows for the most control, but you could also have multiple biomes per species or multiple species per biome. Now try saying that 10 times fast. In this biome, we'll add some bigger Scots pine trees with a much lower density to fill out the forest a bit more. It looks like the leaves are a bit dark, so let's change the leaf colour in the material settings of one of the trees and copy it to the rest of the Scots pine trees with the copy button at the top of the section. Now we need some ground foliage to add an understory to the forest, so let's add a new biome for that. If you want to add multiple trees at once, you can click the drop down next to the tree list and select multi-add. Here you can select as many trees as you want and they will all be added when you click OK. We want to add some small bushes, so we can filter the results by searching for a keyword like small or shrub in the top bar. Because these trees are much smaller, we will need a lot more of them to cover the ground, so increase the density in the scattering panel to do that. Finally, we can add a bit of colour by creating one last biome and adding a flowering bush like a rhododendron to it. This has increased the number of trees to about 24,000, but amazingly, the viewport is still completely responsive, even on my 4-year-old laptop while recording this tutorial. Now, if we want all these trees to point towards the camera, we can select it from the drop-down in the scattering section, or we can click the checkbox next to it to make it automatically select the scene camera. To apply this to other biomes, click the copy button at the top of the section, and make sure that only the camera and use scene camera settings are checked so that we don't overwrite the settings that we don't want to copy, like density and scale. Then click OK, and all of the trees should now point towards the correct camera. For even more optimization, the add-on will automatically cull the trees that are outside of the camera's field of view. You can control the offset around the borders by changing the padding setting. And you're done! Now you can change the lighting and terrain to your liking, and hit render for a realistic and optimised forest, super fast. If you already have the amazing Scatter 5 add-on from BD3D, then you're in luck, because Alpha Trees has full integration with it. It comes with 28 pre-made scatter biomes that you can use to create believable forests in just a few clicks. Here's how to use it. First, download the Alpha Trees.scat pack file from your download section and go back to Blender. Then, open the Scatter Biome Manager from the Preferences and go to the Biome Library tab. Finally, Click File, install a scat pack, and then select the file you just downloaded. And you're done! You should now have a folder that contains all of the scatter biomes that you can add by just clicking the plus button. And now to finish off, there's a lot of content now for trees. So let's go through some quick fire tips and tricks to help you use it like a pro. Does part of the add-on not make sense? No problem. In almost all areas of the add-on, you can find info buttons that will give you more information about a certain section, and also provide a link to the correct version of the documentation. Want to import lots of trees at once? You can use the multi-add button in the import panel to add multiple trees at a time. Just select the trees you want to add, and click OK to have them automatically imported. This also works for biomes, and you can find the option in the drop-down menu next to the tree list. Don't want to have to select an object to edit its alpha trees settings? You can pin objects by clicking the button in the header of the import panel, so that it will continue to show the settings for that object even when it's not selected. Can't find the tree you want? You can search for trees by typing in the search box, and can even only include trees of a certain type, species, size, or specific tags such as flowering or pruned. Have a biome that you want to use in another file? You can export and load biomes to external files using the save and load biomes operators next to the biome list. You can also rename, remove and look inside saved biomes with the manage biomes operator. You can then import these biomes in any file you want. 
You can hold hotkeys while toggling the visibility of biomes to change which of them it affects. Shift toggles all biomes on or off, Control inverts which biomes are visible, and Control plus Shift isolates only the selected biome. This also works for any other UI list in alpha trees. Still running out of memory on large scenes? You can lower the quality of the tree images in the drop down in the tree settings. Often, if the trees are small enough on the screen, this won't even be noticed in the final render, but with low quality, it uses 64 times less memory than the images at high quality. And that's all for this tutorial, but if you still have questions, don't hesitate to tell me in the comments of this video, in the thread on Blender Artists, on Blender Market, or on my Twitter. Links for all of those are in the description. And of course, obligatory like, subscribe, comment, etc. if you want to see more alpha trees and Blender content. See ya!